Let's start with uh, some statistics. This is a paper that came out in the year 2001. And it looked at the data that existed on type two diabetes around the world in the year 2000. And at that time, there were 151 million diabetics stalking the earth. And what was projected for a decade later, 2010, was that we would then be up to 221 million. That's a 46% increase or an annualized inflation rate of 3.88%. This is not what we saw. What we actually saw was that we, instead of 221 million, we actually had 285 million. And that's an annualized inflation rate of 6.55%, a doubling over what was anticipated. By 2014, we were up to 422 million. That's an annualized inflation rate of 10.3%, a tripling over what was anticipated. By 2019, we were up to 463 million. And now what is projected for eight years from now, 2030, is 578 million. And that, this is all during the period of time when we understood that we had an obesity epidemic, that we understood that there, we have a healthcare crisis, that we have a climate crisis, and clearly nothing's being done about it. Things are only getting worse. W-T-F. You know, you could actually make the case that doctors cause obesity and diabetes. And actually, that's not far from the truth. And I will explain why. And it's not just adults. You know, that was all adults. Now we're looking at children here. And you're looking at type 2 diabetes by race and ethnicity, in the 10 to 14 year old age group and in the 15 to 19 year old age group from 2001 all the way up to 2017. So blue to orange, and you can see that it doesn't matter which demographic you look at, things continue to get worse over time. Now, this is taking its toll because you can see health expenditure costs here on the x-axis against life expectancy on the y-axis. And you would think that the more money you throw at it, the longer you would live. Well, here are all the OECD countries, the 37 developed countries, and how they're doing in terms of health expenditure versus life expectancy. They're all kind of bundled up here in the, in the center. But take a look at the U.S. I mean, we have just completely gone off the rails. We spend more and get less. And for the last four years in a row, we have seen a decline in life expectancy because of chronic metabolic disease. Now, the money is not going to hospital costs here in red. The money is not going to physician costs here in green. It's not going to pharma costs here in purple, because if you add all these up, they do not add up to the total costs, because the rest of it is going to the care and treatment of chronic metabolic disease, of which diabetes is the sentinel disease, but there are many others. There's hypertension, uh, dyslipidemia, cardiovascular disease, cancer, dementia, fatty liver disease, polycystic ovarian disease. These eight diseases form the basis of what is basically gutting healthcare around the world, and particularly in the United States. 75% of all healthcare dollars are now spent on eight diseases, and they are all diseases of energy metabolism. So, we have to face two inconvenient truths. And right now, we are not facing them. We don't even know they exist, but here they are. The first, there is no medicalized prevention of chronic metabolic disease. There's only long-term treatment. And that treatment doesn't even work. And the reason is because that treatment is actually not treating the disease. It is treating the symptoms of the disease. Like giving an aspirin to a patient with a brain tumor because they have a headache. Might help the headache. Ain't going to do a damn thing for the brain tumor. The statins for cardiovascular disease, do they work? No. The antihypertensives for hypertension, do they work? They lower the blood pressure. Do they actually prolong life? 
No. How about the oral hypoglycemics for type two diabetes? They lower the blood glucose. Do they prolong life? No. So we are treating the symptoms and we are causing enormous costs in the process. In fact, we now spend $3.8 trillion a year on medical care, of which 75% is chronic metabolic disease, of which 75% is preventable if we could go back to the rates of 1970 before the obesity and diabetes epidemic reared its ugly head. Second uh, uh, inconvenient truth, you cannot fix healthcare until you fix health, and we're not. You cannot fix health until you fix diet, which we're not. And you can't fix diet until you know what the hell is wrong. And what we've said was wrong with diet has been wrong itself for the last 50 years because we have been barking up the wrong tree. And we know why now we've been barking up the wrong tree. (laughs) 